Hi, this video is to uh, give you an introduction to interrupts. So our learning objectives, and we'd like to uh, have you be able to explain what an interrupt is, write an interrupt service routine, use a watchdog as a limited feature timer, discuss the computer energy consumption issues, use the uh, correct processor clock for a given problem, use low power mode to make the process sleep and save batteries if you're running on batteries, uh, use uh, timer interrupts for pulse width modulation. The topics we're going to look at and interrupts are uh, interrupt service routines, interrupt flags, interrupt vectors, interrupt stack, the uh, latency, an interrupt. Then in the next video we'll look at uh, low power modes and processor speeds and then finally we'll look at clocks, uh, basically timers, watchdog timer, debounce of, the sw of switches and uh, pulse width modulation. So let's look at the first topic here, interrupts. <coughs> so basically an interrupt is kind of like this. You've got your main routine over here building on something. It's a synchronous routine, means it just kind of goes from one instruction to the next, to the next line, to the next line, to the next line, and is working on completing a task. And then an interrupt occurs. Perhaps the telephone rings. And when the telephone rings, the uh, main process uh, stops for a minute and it goes and talks on the telephone to whoever's calling and uh, takes care of their issue and then says goodbye and goes back to working on the main main job and keeps interrupt uh, or working on that until another interrupt occurs maybe the doorbell is pushed so uh, the processor goes out to the doorbell and checks to see and what do you know the postman is there so he receives a package and he goes back to work on uh, the main process and, uh, and then another interrupt occurs uh, an alarm is going off and so he goes and he turns off the dryer and gets the clothes out and folds them up and then he goes back to his his main routine and maybe he starts doing something in the main routine that is extremely important and he can't be interrupted so he puts on his earmuffs and you can do that in the process to uh, make it so no more interrupts can bother you at least non maskable ones or maskable ones I mean so interrupts uh, interrupt is an execution of a pro program um, or execution of a program normally proceeds predictably with interrupts being the ex exception in other words just like we saw with the guy there an interrupt is an asynchronous signal indicating something needs attention now asynchronous means that it could happen at any point synchronous means it goes in step with a clock um, you know, from one instruction to the next. The asynchronous thing could happen because someone pushed a button, like the doorbell, or a timer ran out, or all kinds of various things that are unpredictable when they're going to happen in your program. So some event has occurred, or some event has completed, so the processing of an interrupt subroutine uses the stack. You, you use the stack to store variables so you can go back to work after you're done with the interrupt sub service routine. Processor stops what it's doing, stores enough information on the stack to resume later. It executes the interrupt service routine. It re restores the saved information from the stack after it's done with the interrupt service routine and it hits the RETI instruction. And then it resumes execution at the point where the processor was before the interrupt occurred. So what are interrupt flags? Each interrupt has a flag that is raised or set when the interrupt is pending. 
Each interrupt flag has a corresponding enable bit. Setting this bit allows hardware the hardware module to request an interrupt. So you have to have both the uh, device interrupt and the interrupt has to be enabled in order for the request to go through. Furthermore, there's a global interrupt enable, which will mask all the maskable interrupts. And so that global interrupt enable must be set for all the maskable interrupts for any of those to actually interrupt uh, the processor. And there are some non-maskable interrupts, for example, reset and other non-maskable interrupts uh, like power up, um, reset I mentioned, oscillator fault, illegal flash access, watchdog timer, illegal instruction fetch, and so on. Those things can't be masked. Now, the question is, uh, where do you go and execute when an interrupt occurs? The CPU needs to know where, uh, you know, to fetch the, the next instruction after the interrupt. Um, the address of the interrupt service routine is defined in an interrupt vector. So basically what happens is we reserve some addresses to hold the address where the interrupt service routine starts. The MSP430 uses uh, vectored interrupts. Each I interrupt service routine, or ISR, has its own vector stored in a vector table located at the end of program memory up uh, there at the, in the yellow region there between uh, FFC0 and FFFF. And I should mention this is for the MSP430 uh, G2553 processor, I think. Uh, our processor may have, uh, probably has more interrupts because there are more peripherals and things that can interrupt uh, the processor. So uh, the idea is that at least they're at the top of memory, just above the program code. <coughs> The vector table is located at a fixed location, which is defined by the processor data sheet, and you know it depends on the specific processor you have. But the interrupt service routines uh, can be located anywhere in memory, and and whatever is in the uh, in the vector is the address where the interrupt service routine is. And the MSP430 uh, G2553, I think there's 16. Uh, interrupts uh, and 16 vectors. And so here are the uh, the interrupts for the MSP430 uh, G2553, which of course is not our processor, but it's uh, similar. It's a simpler version of our processor, and our processor has these interrupts as well. Um, but uh, our processor also has some other interrupts, and the, the section numbers and so on in, in this thing are for the 2553, and the addresses are for the 2553. But uh, you can find in the data sheet the data for our uh, processor. And uh, actually, uh, this kind of stuff is, is located in a special file that's... Uh, unique for each processor uh, that Code Composer Studio uses to uh, set the sections and those kind of things, so we'll look at that later. But um, basically this table shows you some inter interesting things. First of all, over on the right hand side you see the priority. The highest priority is power up or external reset. And, and then there's some non-maskable uh, interrupts, you know, oscillator fault or uh, flash memory violation. Those are the next highest priority. Then the B3 timer is the next highest priority. And, the, and, um, and there's um, some different um, interrupt flags in that B3 uh, timer because it can do various different things and they have different um, priorities for each of those um, different uh, modes of the B3 timer. And we'll look at that later. Then after the B3 timer, the watchdog timer is the next uh, priority. And um, 
than the A3 timer and uh, the uh, A3 timer uh, clocks things like um, the serial clocks and the A to D converter and um, then finally there's uh, I.O. ports uh, P2 and P1 are the like the lowest um, priority you can also look right in the middle there on the system interrupt uh, heading. It, it tells you whether it's um, reset, non-maskable, or maskable. All those maskable interrupts are, are disabled with the global interrupt enable vector. So these are non-maskable. Those are the timers, and those are the ports. So processing an interrupt, what happens? Uh, processor completes execution of the current instruction. That's what happens, and then the uh, the master clock, M clock, is started if the CPU was off or in sleep mode. Um, the processor push pushes the program counter on the stack. The processor pushes the stack register on the stack. The interrupt with the highest priority is selected. There could be several interrupts happening at once, and it picks the one with highest priority. The interrupt request flag is cleared if uh, a single interrupt uh, occurred. If there were two of them, that is not cleared. The status register is cleared, which disables uh, further maskable interrupts. It means the GIE bit is cleared. And uh, terminates low power mode. The processor fetches the interrupt vector, stores it in the program counter. The interrupt ser service routine must do the rest. So uh, what happens on the stack? Well, there's a stack pointer here. If you look over on the right, there's uh, a main program. It's uh, getting ready to uh, JNC there. But then an interrupt occurs. And when the interrupt occurs, the program counter and the status registers are pushed on the stack. So the stack pointer is down lower. Um, further interrupts are disabled. And then the program counter um, or, uh, gets uh, um, initialized with the value that was in the interrupt uh, vector table, and it goes down to the interrupt service routine. It does the interrupt service routine, finishes that up, and then um, the uh, status register and the program counter are popped from the stack and it goes right back to where it was and continues executing the main program. So what is interrupt latency? Well it's the time between the, when the ISR happens and when the I, I mean the interrupt happens and the ISR is called. And it generally requires about six clock cycles um, in the MSP430. And interrupt service uh, routine uh, can be interrupted if interrupts are enabled in the ISR <coughs> or if a non-maskable interrupt occurs. Uh, Well-written interrupt service routines will have these properties. They should be short and fast. In other words, get in and get out. Um, you want to require a balance between doing very little, leaving the background code to do lots of processing and doing a lot of processing in interrupt service routines, leaving the background nothing to do. Um, applications uh, that use interrupts uh, should disable interrupts as little as possible, respond to interrupts as quickly as possible, communicate with the interrupt service routine only through global variables, never through registers, because you know it's hard to predict what the registers will happen have when your ISR occurs. And I should mention that interrupts are a place where bugs are really really hard to debug bugs can be very easily introduced. So here's a quiz for you. Um, you can answer these questions and uh, hopefully uh, they're not too hard after this uh, little video here.